All right, tonight we're talking about clarity, the beginning of true success. Clarity, the beginning of true success. Let us start with the nature of success. Success has been defined as the progressive achievement of worthwhile goals. Success has been defined as the progressive achievement of worthwhile goals. Let me say it in a simple way that success is setting a goal and hitting it regardless of what it is. Okay, success is setting a goal and hitting it, all right? You may want to say to yourself, for example, I'm going to exercise tomorrow morning. If you wake up tomorrow morning and then you exercise that success, you set a goal and then you hit it. The first good news, I probably have a few of them to share tonight. The first good news I want to share with you tonight is that success is God's design for you, all right? Success is God's design for you. From, I don't know about you, but from time to time, we get bombarded, okay, with feelings of inadequacy. We get bombarded with questions. Is it, am I, can I succeed, okay? Does God want it for me? Sometimes you're dreaming of something or you want something and you begin to feel, can I get it? Do I deserve it? You need to realize, and I'm going to show you a few scriptures tonight, that success is God's design for you. In other words, God wants you to succeed and then God designed you to succeed. In other words, to set goals and hit your goals, to desire things and to achieve your desires. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28, it says, God God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Can you see that? Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. My emphasis is be fruitful and increase in number. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number. In that verse, God was making a demand on a deposit he has already made in mankind. Okay, God was calling out something he put in already, the capacity to go beyond where you are. So regardless of what 2020 has brought you with, you need to understand you have it in you to progress. You have it in you to move forward in life. You have it in you to dream and to see your dreams come to pass because God designed you for success. Success is God's intention for you. Psalm 1 and verse 1 to 3. You know it is very popular. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked or stand in the way that the sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his Lord day and night. Verse 3 is important. It says that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Look at the next line. Whatever they do prospers. The man who is blessed of God, the Bible says that whatever they do prospers. Would you say to yourself tonight, I was designed by God for success. I am configured for success. Success is God's will for me. Success is God's plan for me. Okay? You've got to learn to say that to yourself. It is the will of God for me to succeed. It is the intention of God for me to succeed. If I want something, God wants it for me. And I'm, talk I'm not talking about greed. I'm not talking about wanting what somebody else has. I'm talking about wanting what you want for yourself. Okay? It's your desire. You need to understand we were designed as humans to desire things, to, to want things, and to achieve our desires. Psalm 92 and verse 12. I'm going to read that to you from the New Living Translation of the Bible. We're talking about clarity, the beginning of true success. Clarity, the beginning of true success. But we have started by defining success, and then we're looking at God's intention for us as far as success is concerned. Psalm 92 and verse 12 to 14. It says, but the godly will flourish like palm trees and grow. Can you see that? The righteous or the godly will flourish like palm trees and grow like the cedars of Lebanon for they are transplanted to the Lord's own house. They flourish in the courts of our God. Even in old age, they will still produce fruit. See, if you are young, you need to understand you are supposed to be productive. You are configured for success. Even when you are old, the Bible says you will still produce results. You will still bear fruit. Okay, the Bible says they will remain vital and green. 
I like the story of a man of God I respect so much. He, has, he, he, has, he had pastored a church for 40 years. And then he voluntarily said he was going to resign from that church. And I was privileged to be in a conference where he was speaking. And somebody asked him, so when you retire from pastoring that church, what are you going to do? The man said, I'm going to go about two cities okay, away from this current church I have pastored for 40 years. And then I'm going to start another church. And you know, we were all surprised. And he said, listen, in the kingdom of God, you don't retire. I'm going to be a blessing till I die. Okay, this person has pastored a very successful church for 40 years and he was not afraid, he was not holding on to his position because, you know, he had this assurance. If I start something, it will grow. You need to say that to yourself from time to time. You need to believe it in yourself according to Psalm 1 and verse 3. Whatever I lay my hands upon, it prospers. Success is in me. Success is who I am. Okay, that is important. All right, we're looking at clarity, the beginning of true success. Okay, but right now we're still looking at the nature of success. I have told you that success is the progressive achievement of worthwhile goals. Success is setting a goal and hitting it. Success is God's design for you. Let me give you one more principle about success. Success is a moving target. Now, this is important. Success is a moving target. In other words, the breakthrough of yesterday is the normal of today. The breakthrough of yesterday is the normal of today. So you've got to realize that you were designed not just to succeed, you were designed for movement. You were designed for progress. You were designed for continuous accomplishment. Okay, it does not matter what you have achieved. You have it in you, okay, to achieve much more because success is a moving target. What used to be celebrated yesterday will become normal today because that's the nature of success, okay? What was breakthrough last year will become normal today. I was telling somebody recently, you know, how be jokingly how that some of the things we do right now with our phones, with our systems are the very things James Bond used to do in those movies and we used to marvel. Okay, take a picture with a pen, all right? Or in those days they would say, "Okay, they are doing research, they type on the computer, somebody's picture pops up." Everybody is doing that right now. It used to be groundbreaking decades ago. Now it's available for everybody, all right? The breakthrough of today is what is the normal of tomorrow because success is a moving target. Genesis chapter 26 and verse 12, okay? I've been meditating on this in recent times and it so blesses my heart. Genesis chapter 26 verse 12 to 13 says, Isaac planted crops in that land and the same year, reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. I wish I had time to, to pack, I mean, to unpack this, but we don't have that time tonight. See, he planted in that year, but the Bible says because of God's blessing, he got a hundred times more because of God's blessing. And that was just the beginning. Verse 13 says, the man became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. I like the way it reads in the New Living Translation. The New Living Translation says the man became rich and his wealth continued to grow. The man became rich and his wealth continued to grow. In other words, there was no stopping him. And you need to understand there is no stopping you. All right, regardless of what 2020 has done, regardless of what 2020 brought your way, you need to realize there is no stopping you. You were created for movement. You were created for progress. You were created for increase. Regardless of what you have achieved, you have the capacity to achieve much more. Why? Success is a moving target. So to remain successful, you have to keep moving. If we were in church, I would have told you to tell your neighbor, don't settle. Okay, but you can type it in the comment section. You can send it to somebody right now. Tell the person, don't settle. Regardless of what you have achieved, regardless of what you have accomplished, regardless of where you are, what people are saying, the accolades you have acquired over the years, it does not matter. You have the capacity to continue to birth new things, to continue to produce results, to continue to accomplish because success is a moving target. Let me warn you, if you stop growing, you will lose relevance. It's very important to take note of that. If you stop growing, you will lose relevance because success is a moving target. Bishop Oedekwe speaking one time said, the player that does not transit into becoming a coach will eventually pay money to watch football in the same stadium that people paid money to watch him play. Let me say it again. The player who does not transit from, be from being a player to being a coach one day we'll pay money to watch football in the same stadium where people paid money to watch him play. So you've got to keep growing, 
Okay? If you stop growing, you will lose relevance. Let me say it in a way you will remember. Competence is old school. Relevance is the new normal. I can do it today is not enough. I am positioned to be able to do it tomorrow is what holds sway right now. Success is a moving target, okay? And that is the reason why I am talking about clarity tonight because clarity is the beginning of success. If you don't have clarity, it will be difficult for you to succeed. Okay, so let's talk about clarity. Why clarity? Listen, on the journey of life, all things being equal, speed is determined by light. I'll say it again. On the journey of life, all things being equal, speed is determined by light. This is what I'm saying. How far you go and how much you achieve will be determined by how much of light you have. When I say light in this context, I'm talking about timely, relevant information. If you're taking notes, you want to take notes of these words. Timely, relevant information. Okay? Timely, relevant information. On the journey of life, all things being equal, speed is determined by light. In other words, how far you go in life and how much you achieve or you accomplish will be determined by how much light you are working with. Okay? How much light you are working with. And I said light in this context means timely, relevant information. T-R-I. Timely, relevant information. At every point in time, you have to be clear. There are relevant information or there's relevant information that is not timely. For example, if I start to talk, my, I mean, talk to my five-year-old son, I mean, teach my five-year-old son how to drive a car, it is relevant information perhaps that he will need in his future. But that's not what he needs now at the age of five. Okay, so it's not enough that you have information. You have to have information that is needed where you are right now. And that's why I call it timely, relevant information. Okay, you can have timely information that is not relevant. You can have relevant information that is not timely. And that's the reason why you have to be clear at every point in time. Okay, because you've got to have light. Your success is determined by how much of light you are working with. I like to say this to people. Light does not change anything. It reveals things for what they are. If I switch off the lights in this room right now, okay, and I come in, I'm likely to bump into stuff. But when I turn on the light, the obstacles are still going to be there. But because I have light, I can I mean, avoid them. And because I can avoid them, I can move faster. And so when you're sluggish in your accomplishment, when things are not happening the way they should happen for you, perhaps you don't have timely, relevant information. You don't have clarity. It's the same thing. We drive faster. Have you noticed during the day than we drive at night? Because during the day, we have more light. Okay, and we say, when I say light, don't forget, it is what? Timely, relevant information. Let me tell you one more thing about clarity. Clarity becomes, oh, sorry, clarity before challenges conditions your reflexes. Okay, these are powerful principles I'm sharing with you. Clarity before challenges conditions your reflexes. Okay, you won't lose your mind even if you lose your footing. I shared this with a couple of me folks in our church recently. You see, to every situation in life, there is a proper response. To every situation, there is a right response. If you are clear, you will know the right response. What happens to a person is not as important as how he responds. If you have clarity before the crisis, your reflexes will be sharp. Okay? If you have clarity before the crisis, your reflexes will be what? Will be sharp. Your ability to respond when situations happen, when circumstance, okay, challenges come your way will be determined by your ability or by, by the clarity that you have. Let me give you one more principle about clarity as we move on tonight. Clarity at crossroads improves the quality of your decisions. Clarity at crossroads improves the quality of your decisions. As you move along in life, okay, you've got timely relevant information, yet you will still get to points in your life where you will need to make a decision. You will need to know what to choose. A lot of times, choosing between bad and evil is not a problem. But when you have to choose between good and right, okay, you, you, that's where you need clarity. You, you've got to know what to choose. For example, there is a job in Lagos that's going to pay you, say, about 500000 every month. And then there's this other job, say probably in the southeast, that's going to pay you 1.2 million. Okay, um, but in the southeast, you, you you may have some security challenges that you don't have in Lagos. What should I choose? 
Okay, what should I choose? Or they, 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 this lady with about three guys at the same time, three of them are good, okay, God-fearing, got a job, good-looking, the three of them like you. Who do you choose? Clarity at crossroads, okay, makes, I mean, improves the quality of your decision. That's why clarity is important. At every position, at every time in your life, you have to be clear, okay? You have to be Claire, I've shared with you three principles about clarity. Let me remind you. I said on the journey of life, all things being equal, speed is determined by light. How far you go and how much you achieve will be determined by how much light you are working with. And light here means timely relevant information. At every point in time, you have to be clear. I told you, I said clarity before challenges conditions your reflexes. Okay, you won't lose your mind even if you lose your footing because to every situation, there is a right response. With clarity, you know exactly how to respond. And thirdly, I told you that clarity at crossroads improves the quality of your decisions. Clarity at crossroads improves the quality of your decisions. And everybody from time to time will get to crossroads where you have to make a choice between good and right. Okay, clarity is crucial for moments like that. This is a powerful principle about clarity I want to share with you. Clarity is a product of solitude. Clarity is a product of solitude. A lot of solitude. Clarity is a product of solitude. Listen, if you are going to gain clarity, you have to form the habit of investing time in solitude. In the book, Thinking for a Change by John C. Maxwell, he said that you should have a thinking place and a thinking time. And as we wind down 2020 and prepare for a new year, perhaps this is one habit you want to inculcate, you want to develop, okay? Having a thinking time and a thinking place. For example, for me, the morning is my thinking time. I wake up very early and when I wake up most mornings, I wake up with fresh ideas. Everywhere is still very quiet. I go to a secret place and I process my ideas. I document my ideas. A lot of the things I share, a lot of things I teach, I conceive them, I prepare them in the morning. It's my thinking time. Okay? And right now I have different spots, okay, in the house that I would just sit and I think I have a desk where I work, where I think. But one of my favorite thinking places and thinking time is my drive time to work and back. When I'm driving all by myself, see, most of the time when I'm driving, I love to be alone. And when I'm driving and I'm alone with my thoughts, I generate ideas. I process ideas. I gain clarity. So I'm going to encourage you to follow the advice of John C. Maxwell to do what? To have a thinking place and a thinking time. Let me make a statement that would bless you. If God cannot catch you alone, he's not going to say much to you. If God cannot catch you alone, is not going to say much. He won't say much to you. Psalm 91 and verse 1 says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It is he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High that shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When you want to hear from God, you have to invest in solitude. When you want to learn to harvest your thoughts, you have to invest in solitude. When you want to be a person of clarity, you have to what? Invest in solitude. I want to read Psalm 23. We all know it's a possible, I mean, popular psalm, but I want us to look at it tonight again. I mean, to look at it again tonight. Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Now look at this. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Can you see this? And then he refreshes my soul. Verse 2 again, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. It is in the place of quietness that he refreshes my soul. It is after I gain clarity that I can go to the next line. He says, he guides me along the paths, along the right paths for his name's sake. Now look at verse 4, clarity before crisis now. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. You know, a lot of people, when they're going through tough times, when you, when you enter challenges without clarity, you, you forget the presence of God. You forget you are not alone. You forget you are not by yourself. But when you have clarity before crisis, okay, you don't lose your composure. It says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Verse 5 is crucial. You prepare a table before me 
in the presence of my enemy. Now, these are the words of a person who has clarity. And in the beginning of this psalm, he has shown us how he gained clarity. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all I need. He makes me lie down in green pastures. That is inspiration. Okay? The word. He makes me lie down beside quiet waters. That is solitude. What does he do in verse 3? He refreshes my soul. Now, this is a cycle you can go through the way you like. For someone like me, I do it on a daily basis. This refreshing of the soul is on a daily basis. It's on a daily basis. I, I put it to you that even if you are having a bad day, you can restart your day. All right? Following this principle. All right? Green pastures, quiet waters, refreshing my soul. The moment you gain clarity from that place, then you understand, when I see enemies, I'm looking for tables. Look at verse 5 again. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. I'm not sure you see this. It's in the present tense. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. The enemy is a distraction. So every time I see an enemy, I'm looking for a table. In other words, to every challenge, there are opportunities. Even though in every opportunity, there might be challenges. But to every challenge, there are opportunities. So the moment I see a challenge, I know there is a way out. There is a way forward. I can stand under this. I can survive this. I can surmount this. See, when you have clarity, you will see God in the midst of your situation. See, and there's nothing as calming as knowing that regardless of what I'm dealing with, regardless of what I'm going through, God is with me. God is working for me. Look at what it says. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. When we go back to verse 4, it says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In other words, God is not just with me. God is active in my challenges. God is doing something even though I'm going through something. So I'm not going to be distracted by the enemy. I'm going to focus on God. But if you lack clarity, you will not see God in the midst of your storm. Verse 6 says, Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay, I've showed you how to gain clarity. You've got to invest in solitude. You've got to know God is on your side. You've got to pay attention to what he has to say. I've told you that if God cannot catch you alone, he's not going to say much. If God cannot catch you alone, he's not going to say much. Now, let me round this up tonight. I want to give you some practical principles, okay? Um, there are two principles I want to share with you. The first one, I call them the four questions. These are four questions that when you ask yourself, okay, and prefer answers to them, you gain clarity. Four questions. You can write them down. Now, these are not just questions to remember. These are questions you must answer from time to time. Listen, never have a moment in your life where you don't have answers to these questions. Question one, who am I? For those who were part of what we did, purpose is everything. I showed you how to write a personal purpose statement. I am a coach. I'm talking about myself now. I am a coach. My purpose is to help people discover themselves and make the most of life. You should have such a statement for yourself. I am a dash. Use a word to describe yourself. Then after that you say, my purpose is to dash. Look for a phrase or an expression to describe yourself. And at every point in time, you've got to have a sense of purpose. Okay, so question one, who am I? A personal purpose statement will help you answer actually question one and question two. Question two says, why am I here? Why am I here? Question three, what am I doing now? That's question three. Question four, what am I doing next? Listen, if at every point in time you can prefer answers to these four questions, you would have clarity. You would have clarity. Who am I? Why am I here? What am I doing now? What am I doing next? Somebody said that successful people, or rather, um, leaders focus on what happens next. Leaders of leaders focus on what happens after what happens next. Okay, so it's not enough for you to know what's happening now. You've got to know what happens next. So, for example, I'm a coach. My purpose is to help people discover themselves and make the most of life. I am right now speaking to a couple of people on Instagram Live. What am I going to do next? I'm going to rest and tomorrow morning I'm going to the office and I have a list of things I'm going to do when I get to the office. You see, at every point in time, you must know what you're doing and you must know what you're doing next. That's clarity. I know who I am. I know why I'm here. I know what I'm doing and I know what I'm doing next. So if something goes wrong with what I am doing now, I know what to move to. Okay? Because I know who I am. I know why I'm here. I know what I'm doing now and I know what I'm doing next. As I'm talking to you right now, for our church, Hill City Church, we already have a master plan for 2021. 
Okay, so we have things we are doing between now and the end of the year. We can call that that's what we are doing now, but we know what we are doing next. Okay, so you've got to know what you're doing now and what you are doing next. And finally, I want to share with you what I call the five P's. Okay, the five P's. You can use the four questions. You can use the five P's. Okay, they will work for you. The five P's, I took them from Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 to 18, and then verse 21 to verse 25. Because of time, I will read and I will show you, okay, these five P's. I've used the letter P to describe them so that you can, you know, remember them. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 15 says, The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. The first P is place. The Bible says the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden. So God gave him a place. That's place. Okay. And then the Bible says to work it and to take care of it. And that's purpose. Place, purpose. Then verse 16 says, and the Lord commanded the man. That's the third P, principles. So God gave him a place. God gave him a purpose. And then God gave him principles to live by. Look at the principles God taught him. You are free to eat of any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This is a clear instruction. Okay? For when you eat of it, you will surely die. And the Lord God said, verse 18 now, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. That is the next P, partner. So at every point in time, if I have clarity, I must have my place, my purpose, my principles, my partners. Okay? Place, purpose, principles, partners. Now, this is very important. I will make a help suitable for him. Now, if you jump to verse 21, it says, So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, this now is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. Now listen. The next P is providence. Providence. So I have my place. I have my purpose, my principles, my partners. Then in the midst of all of this, I must see the hand of God in everything that I'm involved with. That's providence. Okay? The involvement of God. In other words, what I do is what I am certain God wants me to do. Okay, Jesus, you know, at a point was speaking and he said, the things that I'm doing, okay, they are not from me. This is, these are the things I see my father do. The words that I'm speaking to you are the very words of the father. And it's the same thing with us. Like he taught us to pray, okay, it is your will be done on earth as it is. In other words, I'm going to do what I can see that God is doing. So I have my place, I have my purpose, I have principles I live by, I have partners and in all of these things I have the providence of God okay I can see the hand of God in all that I am doing if God is not involved I'm not going to be involved listen this is another way that I gain clarity there's no time in my life that I am not specific about these five p's okay my place you see for everybody there is a location part time there is a place for you you've got to be able to be clear concerning your your place Number two is your purpose. You've got to be clear about your purpose. In other words, when I'm in a place, I must know why I am there. And then at every point in time, there are people that I'm supposed to do life with as are partners. And then there are principles I live by. I call them my personal creed. Okay? And then in everything I am doing, I've got to have providence. I've got to see the evidence that God is involved. Okay? If you are clear about these five P's, your success is inevitable. If you're clear about these five P's, your success is inevitable. Okay, I'm going to stop there tonight and we're going to continue next week, Wednesday. Okay, I always like to make it brief, okay, so that we can remember and then to give room for those who want to ask questions. Okay, so please don't forget the four questions, okay, that would help you glean clarity. Who am I? Why am I here? What am I doing now? What am I doing next? And then the five P's, these are five areas of your life you've got to be clear about at every point in time. My place, my purpose, my principles, my partners, and the move of God, the partnership or the providence of God in my life. Okay, if you want to ask a question, please use the question icon and I'm going to um, answer your question. If we have anybody who has a question before we round up tonight. Please. Okay, this question says, how do you narrow down your purpose, especially if you are multidimensional, 
uh, if you would, you would probably need to go to my IG live uh, and check the past three sessions that we have had. We titled it Purpose is Everything. Okay. In the second part, I dealt with the discovery of purpose and I explained how to discover your purpose. All right. And then in the third part, I taught on living on purpose. All right. Those three teachings are the answer to this question. But you see, like I think I shared with somebody who asked the question a couple of um, weeks back. When you are multi-talented, you can't afford to be confused. Um, the starting point is whatever your hand finds to do, give it your best shot. Okay, whatever is in front of you, give it your best shot. The more you do it, you will notice that even though you are multi-gifted or multi-dimensional, everything actually has a design and they work together. Okay, you will have a primary gift Okay, and then you will have ancillary gifts. But it's as you use your gifts, as you get busy, that's how you will discover. Okay, so you see there's no one event or a moment where you figure it out. It is a process. And the more you exercise your gifts, the more proficient you would, you would notice. Look, one is stronger than the other. I'll give you a personal example. When I started out, um, I started out with singing. I can still sing, okay, but... As I matured, I found out that even though I could sing, I write, I lead, all of them, you know, are uh, ancillary to my leadership. I'm primarily a strategist and a leader. Because of that, I can speak. I've got a gift of communication. But you see, my creativity now is ancillary, okay, to my leadership. I, I do designs. I do video editing. Okay, I'm a creative person. Okay, and all of those gifts are ancillary, okay, to my leadership. So as you develop, you would find out that even though you are multi-gifted or multi-dimensional, okay, everything has a, there's a pattern, but it is as you mature that you will discover the pattern. Okay. There's another question here. Sir, please, is this going to be available on the store on your SoundCloud? Okay. Um, everything I have shared and everything I share every Wednesday is available free of charge Okay, you see it on my IGTV, you will see it on my YouTube channel. Um, the videos on my YouTube channel actually have the notes and the slides, okay, with them. Of course, I can't have slides here now, but if you watch the YouTube videos of the same teachings, the slides are there, all right? The audios are available on the Hill City store for free download. So if you go to hillcityng.org forward slash store, then navigate to the free download section, okay? I have actually right now about 25 or 26 teachings you can download absolutely free and the teachings we've been doing every wednesday is part of it so you can just go there now and download those messages listen to them and have them bless you okay i think that's the end um, of the questions that we have all right thank you for being a part of this um like i said after this moment the video will be available in my igtv by tomorrow it will be available on youtube with the notes and slides and um, the audio will be available on the hill city store all right tomorrow by noon tomorrow the audio will be available for free download thank you very much for being a part of this next wednesday is another good time and we're going to have a good time together i don't want to give you a heads up about what i'm sharing next week wednesday but it's going to be a good time all right don't miss it for anything thank you for being a part of this i look forward to seeing you next week wednesday have a beautiful evening bye bye